Hello and welcome. This is Royal Ascot Day 3 Staking Plan video. Alrighty, if you want my normal high risk accumulators, come back in the morning. If you want the full breakdown staking plan with singles about 75% and accumulators 25%, this is where you need to be. So what we're going to do, we're going to go through the results of today in a minute, which was another very good day. Then we've got the full deck of bets ready for tomorrow. Same format, hopefully everybody is familiar. If you're new to this, it's quite straightforward. I'll spin through every race, individual selections, and then I'll go through my lucky 15 for the day, my win Trixie for the day, and my six fold accumulator for the day. Uh, that is the format I'm gonna do. Um, first thing I'm gonna say actually is interesting, um, cause I'm sure I wasn't the only one today, but uh, I was approached by a betting company about uh, sponsorship and um, yeah, I, I guess it's a really curious thing because I set this channel up not not to make money and that's why I don't charge anything and I give everything out I do for free. Um, I set it up as a bit of a hobby because I, I'm, you know, I make money doing gambling. I'm, I know I'm good at what I do, but I also know I have a very unorthodox approach because um, there isn't many, if any, people out there who do multiple accumulators on multiple days and on things like uh, you know, Ascot, you might have a, somebody who's giving out a tip for a day or a bet for a day or a tip every race. I'm doing a full staking plan. So um, I'm doing that cause, because I know I'm I'm good at what I'm doing and I want to kind of help people, particularly people who are long-term losing at, at gambling, to show and kind of give a few nuggets. So it's not just about the tips, but sometimes it's about the betting strategy. And I don't consider myself a tipster. I would say I'm a betting strategist. Um so I do do I put a lot of effort into research, but I'm you know I'm not going to say this is the horse that's going to win. I'll tell you this horse is good value for money in the betting market, and that's a entirely different thing. Um, and I appreciate what I'm doing for Ascot. You know, it, it, like I said yesterday, it's not for everybody because some people look at it and go, "You just chuck a load of darts at a board." All I will ever say is, "Judge me in the long term." So normal channel, judge me in the long term for, for Ascot for Cheltenham. Judge me by the end of the week, um, and and if I've made a profit then I've done my job. And if you don't understand how, or you think I've done it in some convoluted way, entirely up to you. The point here is most people don't make profit. I make profit and I'm showing you how I do it. And you can do that by following the selections, listening to what I'm saying, looking at the types of bet I'm doing. Clearly I'm making it fit every day. So outside the channel, I don't bet exactly the same money for each day of Royal Ascot. So I went a bit bigger on, on Tuesday, a little bit less on Wednesday. I'll be going even less on Thursday. It's the it's the risky day for me um, in terms of the way that the place terms are. So it's the day I'll be betting least um, off the channel. And then Friday, Saturday look, look pretty good. So I shall be going for it a little bit more Friday, Saturday. Um, but yeah, anyway, I, I basically turned them down. Um, I don't have any need or want to be affiliated. The idea was I put a link um, in the description and any of you who sign up for it, I basically get some money for it. It, it sounds like a really easy gig, but um, I'm, I'm not on it to make money. And, and I'm trying to navigate the world of gambling uh, with integrity, which is quite hard to do. So, uh, so as much as people might be baffled by what I'm doing sometimes, hopefully most people realise that uh, I'm, you know, I'm fairly decent person I'm trying to do the right thing here uh, I'm not there's no extras it's not hidden um, and I don't have need to make money from betting companies um, or your lovely selves so I'll make money from betting companies by placing bets that's absolutely fine um, and I've always said if I get to a point where YouTube are actually going to pay me revenue which is which is nearly at a point then I'll happily accept YouTube's money um, if YouTube want to pay me I never <laughs> intended to be a YouTuber uh, but that is uh, apparently how what I've become but you know, don't get me wrong, the money from YouTube is not something I'm ever going to make a living off. So uh, so I'll happily take their money if they want to give me money as a global organisation. But I'm, I'm not going to be uh, getting rich off it. And I'm certainly, it's not going to be a full-time job being a YouTuber, uh, nor what I want it to be. That being said, I do get a lot of enjoyment out of doing the videos on the channel. Um, anyway, that was my long ramble. Uh, hopefully that all made sense. But uh, yeah, basically... I'm happy, happily wear flat, flat caps would be sponsored like that, but uh, but not not from a betting company. Um, and I know I talk a lot about Skybet as the best bookmaker, but even if Skybet approached me, nah, I wouldn't. I mean, you know, maybe a million, do it for a million. Um, cool. And if I did do it, <laughs> I'd be super transparent about it and I'd tell you when they're being a bit crap too. Um, 
So yesterday, is, yesterday is today's bets, day two bets. Let's get into that uh, before this video becomes uh, never ending. So forty pound on was our stake day two. Bear in mind, all of the prices I'm getting from the statistics I'm working out here are through starting prices. So you may well have got more money than this if you didn't take the starting price and you got best price guaranteed. I don't believe, again, second day in a row, anything we got back was particularly bookmaker dependent. If you were on the course and you had standard terms outside of, you know, on-course on bookmaker terms, you wouldn't have quite done it. Um, but anyone using a bookmaker, high street or online, um, it will certainly the major ones will have had the same return at least. So forty on sixty six ninety back. Um, so spinning through it, what's the wrong bit of paper? Um, what did we have? So in the Queen Mary, we started off with uh, we only managed to hit hit one place there, uh, Mayland and Sea twenty eight to one. So we got place return for Mayland and Sea that would run a cracker in second. Um, then in the Queen's Files, my main horse placed, uh, snagged fourth place, um, Al Kareem 10 to 1, so we got a bit back there. Then in the Prince of Wales, anyone who's watched it will know Frankie had a nightmare, the hood wouldn't come off, um, and Lord North lost the race at the start, so who knows how close it would have been. It certainly would have been closer to where it was. Um, so yeah, that was, that was down. And then in the Duke of Cambridge, um, Mother Earth didn't, didn't run very well. There was a withdrawal at the start. Um, the French horse got withdrawn. It went down to seven runners, and I thought that could be a toast for Thunder Beauty, but what a beaut uh, it was. Second place at 40 to 1. And interestingly, for those of you who, uh, who like some of the statistics and maths here, the fact that there was a horse withdrawn actually benefited us in terms of payout. So although there was a 15p rule 4, and you might go, oh, that's really annoying, there's a 15p rule 4, because a horse got withdrawn, the terms went from fifth of the odds to quarter of the odds. So quarter of the odds with a 15p withdrawal was marginally in our favour. So the betting gods were looking down on us. It was worth pence. But the point is, these things sometimes go in your favour. So the fact there was a withdrawal, and you might be thinking, oh, we lost out because it's 15p rule four. The fact it then went quarter of the odds on this horse actually was a helpful thing. Um, because a quarter of 34 is better than a fifth of 40. I'll stop there before people turn off. Um, Royal Hunt Cup, that did not go so well um, on the singles. So we've got nothing back on the singles in the Royal Hunt Cup. Um, then Windsor Castle, if there was any horse I was slightly leaning on today, if you look through my betting structure, I had it singles in the six fold and in the Lucky 15, it was Chateau. That was kind of, I wouldn't call it a banker, but it was my lean horse to uh, to get at least placed, which it obliged, uh, it did. Uh, it came 4, 15 to 2. Uh, Union Court uh, didn't, but Jumbo actually snagged uh, fifth. And I think, as far as I can see, the majority of, of bookies, high street bookies, ended up did pay fifth for Jumbo. Um, so that would be the odd, odd one that didn't pay out. It was only worth a few quid, but uh, but it was nice, a little extra on there as well. And then, finally, in the 6.10, we had no joy there. No, neither of those placed. So we had a few bits and bobs back on the singles, so it was all right. Um, then in the lucky 15 we had two we had a place double Maria Branwell and Chateau placed so we got a couple of quid back for that the win Trixie wasn't so good today so Love Reigns was placed Bay Bridge was placed Saffron Beach won um, but you don't get anything back for one win and two places on a win Trixie so no cigar there but what took our money home today was the six fold accumulator Love Reigns placed, Al Kareem placed, Bay Bridge placed, Saffron Beach won, Astro King placed, Chateau placed. It was a full house of places on the accumulator. Um, it paid out on SP prices £47.19. Um, so you may have got better than that if you didn't take if you uh, if you took best price guaranteed, but starting prices paid £47.19. So for the total for two days, I've got it as 80 spent. 160 68 back so we've doubled our money in two days um and we are 39 pound and 32 pounds short of the 200 pound mark which is what our expenditure is so more than happy with where we are for a medium staking plan um to be well at well ahead two days ahead um we've got one day to go so important to say i don't want anyone to get too excited here the win trixie got us through on day one 
the sixfold acker got us through today. We might not have anything tomorrow. Tomorrow is the trickiest day, I think. It's not, it's not to say we can't win and, and that Friday, Saturday, we're going to win. Tomorrow is the trickiest one, I think, of the week. Um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll see how we go. But just because one bet went in today, don't go bigger than the six-fold acre. You, think, you look at it and go, it's well, ATP, £1.60 spent, got a 47 bet, brilliant bet. I'll do, I'll do Callum's bets all the time. They don't necessarily all come in every time. Um, but, uh, yeah, so if you bet it, Bet whatever I bet today. Do the same again tomorrow because the day that you up the stake is the day that, that I'll probably lose. And statistically, I'm due a little bit of a downturn. I, I would say I've had a little bit of luck on my side so far and I'm, I'm, I'll happily take it. So you might think it looks easy. We've basically got £120 to bet in the next three days and all we've got to do is make £40 and we've got a profit. It doesn't always work like that. So so just because the first two days gone well doesn't mean it will carry on. All right. Let's get into the horses because that's basically what you were all here for. Um, 2.30, Norfolk Stakes. Um, it's William Hill and Betfair are four on that. So I really want to flag that because they're not the usual bookies to be the best place to go. But if you want to put your singles on and get the fourth place um, and you've got best price guaranteed, William Hill and Betfair, best place to do it. So once best price guarantee kicks in for those bookies, that's where you want to be on for the singles um, if you've got those accounts. So we're going Brave Nation 6 to 1. It's been backed in this afternoon. It was 10s. Um, I'm not sure if that price is going to do much else other than, than hold. Um, but as I've said, always said, starting prices is what I'm taking for these. So the, the prices here are illustrative. So we've got £1 each way Brave Nation and £1 each way Crispy Cat 11 to 1. That's the Norfolk. Then uh, King George V Stakes is one of the two decent handicaps. So we've got three against the field. We're going Manobi. 11 to 1, Flying Dragon 14 to 1, Savvy Knight 22 to 1. One pound each way on all three of those. Six pound is our bet. Best place to put them is Sky Bet, seven places. But Bet365, Paddy, Betfair, and I've shoved in Boyle Sports as well to give a mention. They are six, not affiliated by the way, they're not sponsoring me. They're all six places. Um, so they, those four six places, everybody else is five. So if you're putting the singles on, um, Sky, you'll get the extra place. Those ones, you'll get the best price guarantee and only get six places. So make your choices. We've then got the Ribblesdale Stakes. So it's a smaller field, standard terms here. I'm going two against it. So Magical Lagoon is a very short price, but I still think there's value in two to one. I think that horse should be shorter and I'd be surprised if it doesn't go short tomorrow, but two to one. So just going two pound win. So, you know, we're not making much profit on that. Uh, Mukadama, M Mukadama, six to one, one pound win. Three pound is our bet, standard terms. As long as you're getting best price guaranteed, doesn't matter where you put the bet on. And then in the Gold Cup, I'm going singles on two biggies. So I've got other horses in the accumulators, but I'm going biggies um, for the singles. So I'm doing Tashcan, 20 to one, one pound each way, and Alniak, 40 to one, 50p each way. Sky bet are four. Definitely put your bets on here. Singles bets with Sky. Um, everybody else is three. The only one gone gone four in the Gold Cup. So these bets definitely best with Sky bet. Then we've got the Britannia handicap. So it's normally a really great race to have a bet on, but because there's there's a promotion on that basically the major bookies are giving proceeds to charity. It's standard terms across the board. So if you want to get extra places, you can go and look in some nooks and crannies at some smaller bookies. But the major ones are all four places and there's 30 runners. So I'm having a little go. But normally I'd be putting more money on this race. But because there's only four places, it's, it's, it's getting four top four places out of 30 runners. Very, very tricky. You're into sort of Grand National territory here. So I'm having a go uh, for the staking plan though. So Tranquil Knight, 15 to 2, pound each way. Barley, 28 to 1, 50p each way. And Jimi Hendrix, 25 to 1, 50p each way. Four pound is your bet on the Britannia. And then we've got the 535, which is the Hampton Court Stakes. I'm just going one at the biggie price. It's only six runner race. So I'm having a go with King Max. I think that's over, over or underestimated by the market. 25 to one, a pound each way. Standard terms, as long as you're getting best price guaranteed, doesn't matter where you put the bet on, two pounds, you bet. And then in the final race, the other decent handicap, 610. 
Buckingham Palace stakes. We're going four against the field here. River Nymph is my number one marginally, 16 to one. Um, Tamawea, 12 to one. Uh, Star of Orion, 14s. Ropey Guest, 28s. And we're going a pound each way on all four. Eight pound is your bet. Bet365 and Sky Bet seven places, but I've underlined Bet365 because you'll get the best price guaranteed. So that if you've got the option of bookies, Bet365 is your best place to put these on. Then it'd be Sky Bet because you get it seven places. Pretty much everyone else is six places on that one. Okay. Then we've got the lucky 15. This is what we're going with for day three. Three oh uh five past three, flying dragon fourteens. 4.20, I've put in up Princess Zoe um, in the Gold Cup. Then I was umming and ahhing and I've stuck with this in the Britannia. It, not favourable terms, but I really think this horse has got a bunch more potential than it's than it's shown already. So I think it is, it is lurking in there. It, it, it is a class horse in a handicap, definitely. Um, but it's going to need some luck in running and getting first four is going to be tricky, but we'll put it in. So who put 50 in you, 11 to 2? And then we're finishing 6.10 River Nymph, 16 to 1. That's your 20p each way, lucky 15. So that's each way, singles, doubles, trebles, and a fourfold. Six pounds, you bet. Win Trixie for tomorrow. So we managed to get, we got them all up on uh, day one, uh, one, one and two place. So we're in good, good nick with these, but it's a tricky, tricky old day. So 6.30, I'm, I'm chancing Brave Nation, took it single, um, yeah, chance in it. It's an open race, though, that one. Um, and then 340, Magical Lagoon. I've talked about that. And then we're going to go 420, the old boy Stradivarius in the Gold Cup to see if we can finish the Trixie off that way. So 60p win Trixie um, is our bet. 240. And then tomorrow's six-fold accumulator. Work today. Will it work tomorrow? Much, much trickier day to try and get this. Value-wise, return on this will pay similar to... Um, to today's but much much more harder to, to land this 230 i'm going for crispy cat 11 to 1 so i'm starting off at a decent price then i'm rolling on to manobi 11 to 1 too um 340 magical lagoon then we're going princess zoe in the gold cup uh who put 50 in you in the britannia at five o'clock and then we're going to finish on the 535 and you know the, the writing's in the wall here isn't it we're going to get five legs up. We're going to get to the one to two favourite. And we need to come the first two at the 5.35 and it'll get turned over. But there we go. That is what the six-fold acker is uh, for tomorrow. 80p each way you bet. Okay, that's what I've got. Um, I'm going to finish there because it's a really long video. So I uh, appreciate, you, you know, uh, there's more important things in your life than my videos. So enjoy day three of Ascot. Let's keep, we, let's hopefully we can keep on a nice little roll. But as I said, regularly on my normal videos, I don't believe in good form. I just believe you can string good days together and sometimes bad days get strung together. So we'll see how day three goes. But I do think it's the trickiest day and it's the day that I'll be betting least off, off channel. Cool. Thank you very much. Cheerio. Goodbye.